Yo, guys, hey, welcome to Coast Connect down here at the Rack Studio. I got Daryl on, and I got my boy Mike G. We are finally back. I was in Austria. My daughter got married in the Alps of uh, Sound of Music, so I'm finally back on the mic, and Daryl's our first guest back after our hiatus of about, what, how many, Mike, how many months, Mike? About three months? He says, yeah, right there, right there. Daryl, how are you doing, my man? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you had a good trip. Glad you're back back in the saddle. <laughs> yes, had to take a break. So how's everything going with the weather and how's everything going in your life? And we, I got some questions for you definitely about baseball because you live in Tennessee. So I definitely got to find out who the hell do you root for, root for in Tennessee? But go ahead. How's everything going on your end real quick? Oh, you, you know I'll talk baseball with you. Yeah, things are good. You know, I'm uh, – uh, you know, it's, it's still it's it's August in, in Tennessee, so I think it was 102 today, and and uh, that's you know with about 90 something percent humidity. So you know you can sit still in the shade and just you know get wet, but uh, but it's good. I'm on the road a lot. Uh, I'm going to do probably about 150 dates again this year, and and uh, you know staying busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you 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 just dropped a new album too, right? What's the name of it? Yeah. The, the new album's called "A Life Well Lived." It was uh, it's on Pine Castle Records. Came out uh, just a couple weeks ago, and it's it's doing really well. I'm 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 real pleased with it. Yeah, hey, do you have any music videos with it yet? Yeah, the, actually, the 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 new single is a song called "Mayberry State of Mind," and uh, there's a there's a new music video with it, and most of the music uh, channels are playing it. So uh, uh, it's 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 going good. All right, so we're going to probably have to grab it off of, of YouTube and, and play it. So now, look, man, you live in Tennessee, and you guys don't have any professional baseball team. So who do you root for? Is it is it out of Ohio or is it out of Atlanta? Who do you got, man? Well, you know, because we are so far removed from a team, it's it's usually, a, a you know, a proximity thing. And most people are either Atlanta Braves fans or St. Louis Cardinals fans and and there's some Cincinnati Reds fans because, you know, all of those stadiums are probably five hours or so from here, you know, a drive. Um, I've always been kind of a National League Central guy. So I'm a big Cubs, Cardinals, Pirates kind of guy, you know, and so I, and then Reds. And so I'll – but I'm pretty easy to please with baseball. I mean, if I'm if I'm on the road and I, I see a Little League game going, I'm liable to pull over and watch a couple innings, you know, just because I love it. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I saw something ironically in the last like three weeks or four weeks. A lot of people have been having talks with Pete Rose and and different things about, you know, I know there's a lot of controversy with it, but it's really interesting to see Pete Rose back kind of in things talking to, you know, play the younger generation. And, you know, and the good thing is, did you play baseball back in the day before you got into music? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always said baseball was my first love, you know, and if I could have if I could have hit a curveball, I might could have pursued it a little further but uh you know i but i just i loved it you know and my my kids loved it my oldest son is a high school baseball coach and you know that's that's been the, the probably the primary bonding you know uh, instrument within with me and my kids has been has been around baseball oh yeah hey man it's the, it's the american game you know and I, I love the way that you know it's made it's come back after it was going through that little bit of lull and everything. So, you know, saying that you have a new song, you got new songs out, you got a new album out um, and you're going to be on the road doing 150 shows. So you are, you're going to be pretty busy. So let me ask you a question. What inspired this new album, man? You know, more than anything else, I guess I, I consider myself a songwriter. I mean, I've been an artist, recording artist for a lot of years, but I'm really passionate about the, the, the writing process and 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 creating and, and leaving a legacy of, of songs that kind of represent, you know, my value system and the things that matter to me. And 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 so that's that's why there's kind of a theme that runs through most of my albums. It's it's strongly based around you know faith and family and you know core values and that sort of thing. And so it's uh, it's just another collection of songs that uh, that kind of uh, you know represent that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you're bringing up a great point, and then Mike, I'll have Mike chime in here real quick. Is that you know lately, 
uh, the Jason uh, song, Aldine song, and all the different things going on. You know, it's really inspirational that we starting to look at, we need to kind of put some values back in our own society. And it has a matter with left to right. I don't get into politics, but what I do believe in is that human kindness still should exist and we should have uh, some aptitude of it. And I'm glad that uh, I see country music and then some of these uh, R&B artists are starting to try to put normal music back into the mainstream of doing, you know, selfless service. But country music has never really gotten away from. I got to meet Toby Keith when I was in Iraq. And it's just one of those things that I, I, I still find. And I love the fact that you have faith and you have value and the things that we still hold, you know, that are wholesome in our in our society. So, Mike, you got anything real quick before we get Daryl to drop? Yeah. What's up, Daryl? How you doing? I didn't meet you last time, but I'm, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to know. Say, what, what, yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, what, what motivates you? What motivates you from writing in the studio? I mean, do you do you complete songs in a day? Like what is the time frame and you know what is the motivational level that you that you that you do? Because it takes a lot to do it now. <laughs> with with writing, it kind of it's it, it's a different a different animal. There are some songs that that you know you'll work on for a while and you'll put aside and you'll get back out and maybe you'll bring in a co-writer and you know you can hammer away at it and and eventually you can build a good song. There are other times that the song will almost show up all at one time, you know and. And so I've always said that songwriting is part gift and part craft. And the ones that come all at once, that's the gift. The other ones, the, the ones that you just have to, you know, blood, sweat and tears brings it out. That's the craft. And 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 so it's those songs, are, they, when they find their way into an album, you know, it, it, it's it's rewarding for me. That's the that's probably what motivates me is is, is taking all those moments and those uh, experiences and, and and with lyrics and, you know, commentary that represents who I am as an individual and and actually putting it out there you know with I'm like I'm like you you know with me everything is measured by politics these days you know but you know and I mean but with me it's not about left and right it's about wrong and right and 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 so I, it's really important to me when I'm record when I'm writing songs or recording songs that I'm 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 saying what what matters to me and and I think it's great that other artists do that even if what matters to them is different or even if i if it's opposite of what i agree with i think that's one of the great things music allows us for is that opportunity to express yourself well you know that's that's on point and in how you shape the world around you is that is that with music all right let's have your first song if you don't mind well man i i'll share this one with you there was a, a gentleman when i was a kid here in town Mr. John L. Mays, and, and Mr. John L. was a, a severely autistic man, and uh, uh, he, but he walked everywhere, and he would walk every day to the nursing home and to the hospital and visit with folks, and he would go to the funerals. Everybody almost had passed away here. He was there, and, and we just loved him. And, but to this day, if you go to his gravestone, it actually says the walking man on his uh, headstone, and it got me to thinking about other walking men, men who had made a difference in their lives just uh, as, as a part of their walk. And so that's, that's the title of this song. It's called The Walking Man. You could find him every morning on the sidewalks of our town. Rain or shine, it didn't matter. Mr. John would make his round. He'd be visiting the shut-ins and the county nursing home. He attended every funeral, paid respects to those gone on. One foot and then the other, step by step he stayed the course, thinking only about others, listening to the master's voice, moving with a purpose, faithful to the plan, and focused on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking from Atlanta down to Selma and the streets of Montgomery. He would walk demanding that all men be treated equally. They gathered like a storm cloud, rained down on D.C., brought change to a nation with a walking preacher's dream. One foot and then the other, step by step he stayed the course. Thinking only about others, listening to the master's voice, 
moving with a purpose, faithful to the plan, and focused on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking man. Well, there are those who will take a side, and some who will take a stand, but few will take the steps required to help their fellow man. We're a world in need of more like Mr. John and Dr. King and the one who took that long walk up a hill called Calvary. First one foot and then the other. Step by step he stayed the course. Thinking only about others. Listening to the master's voice. Moving with a purpose. Faithful to the plan. And focus on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking man. Oh, I want to be a walking man. A great song. The Walking Man is designed. You have Martin Luther King named in the in the song, and you talk about the impact of, of an individual. So the, what you're saying is this person had an impact on the city of the town that you live in right now, and then everybody in the town knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. They called him, you know, either Mr. John or John L. And, you know, he was, uh, you know, even though he was autistic, you know, he was, he walked every day and everybody knew him and he, you know, you could see him in town and, you know, say, John, who's in the funeral home. And he would tell you and tell you who the, the families were. And, and, uh, you know, we just loved him and he just kind of loved us back, you know, in the summer, uh, there was, you know, he would, there was always stops along the way where he knew he could get something to eat. And there were people that would give him something to drink, a place to cool off. And if it started to rain, somebody would take him home. And, you know, he was just kind of a local treasure. Hey, so what's the population for your city? For the town you're in, about four thousand. About four thousand. Damn. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's go back to the funeral home. He knew where everybody died or something, or. <laughs> yeah, he would go he there every did. day, and and and, every, yeah, yeah, he was every day. He would visit with the people that was in the hospital, and he would go to the nursing home and visit with those people, and then he would go to the funeral home and go to the funerals, and you know, and like I said, he did this for decades. I mean, this started many years before I was born and he didn't die until like 2017. I mean, the man wow. walked thousands of miles probably. At one time. You wow. know, and this, you know, this really quiet, humble, autistic black man in our little community. And, you know, he was just adored. You know, you bring this up and, and, and it's pretty awesome is that, you know, you use the word, um, authenticity when I think of the song and when you just brought, you know, what you're just talking about authentic people, in our lives and the people in our, in our towns. And you know what I think, and I hate to say it, I, I see, I think you see it more in smaller towns than you do in the bigger city yeah. of, of being able to be able to reach out, touch people that are authentic. So, you know, what impact do you have on a town? Cause everybody knows you sing. And so I'd love to know if you're, from your, <laughs> you're, you're from your perspective of yourself. How do you think everyone sees you in town? You know, I, I actually appreciate that question um, because I did grow up here and, you know, but and people have known for a long time that I played music. But, you know, as you know, they say, you know, uh, a prophet's not without honor except in his hometown. You know, that's if that was true for Jesus. It's certainly true for me. But but people here have been really encouraging and supportive and. And uh, and so over the past couple of years, I've done a, a benefit concert for our local county uh, arts council. Uh, you know, we sold it out again this year. Uh, and but what I have found is that because so many of the songs that I write are centered around living here and growing up here, it means a lot to to people here that I am actually taking our stories, you know, and sharing them, you know, kind of with the world because these are just, you know humble, quiet, salt of the earth, go to work, you know, love their families kind of people, you know, that kind of fly under life's radar. And, but I just believe everybody has stories and, and those common experiences that we can all relate to, I think make really good songs. And so it's been a, a huge blessing for me to be able to take those stories and turn them into songs and share them, you know, as I travel. 
All right. So how are you impacting the next generation? And you talk about your sons and are either of your, are your, any of your children musicians? No, they, they never took any interest in it. I mean, they play a little bit just for fun, but, but the, the professional part of it never appealed to them at all. In fact, I'll never forget when my, my youngest was in middle school and they were studying Tennessee, same Tennessee history. And he came to me with a textbook, and in the book was a picture of the Grand Ole Opry House. And he said, is this the place you play? And I said, yeah. And he said, so it's kind of famous? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> and that was the first time they'd ever realized that, you know, the, well, maybe some of the stuff that's bad doing is kind of, kind of cool, you know. But, uh, no, they just, uh, they they never took to it. But, but I, I, one of the... The really cool things that songwriters have the opportunity to do is is leave this legacy of work. You know that I I, I have long believed that that maybe one day I will have grandchildren or even great grandchildren that I never get a chance to know and they don't get a chance to know me. But what they will know about me, they will learn from the songs that I have written. And so it's really important to me that the material of those songs be represent representative of 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 what i believe and of the values and the things that matter to me well wow, that's deep man that's a living history that's you know that's powerful daryl that's powerful well i appreciate it. it it's just one of those things that like i said once it kind of dawned on me that you know that i had this opportunity you know i don't take it lightly you know i mean i don't i don't just necessarily i don't write Filler songs and that sort of thing. I mean, I try to write songs that that matter that might make a difference. All right. All right. So, anybody, any shows that you're on on TV lately? Have you done any like any um, uh, special guest appearances on anything on the television or on uh, or on cable? Yeah, I was on uh, Circle Television just a couple of weeks ago on the Bill Cody Show and did a couple of songs on there. And uh, you know, that's probably the only national thing I've done lately that's 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 online on Circle TV, but. Um, you know, there's uh, always the, the potential of, uh, you know, RFD and some of that other stuff that they call from time to time. It's just been a little while. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I realize that you're doing the festival thing and, you, and you're busy. Mike's got your website up. Now you got a store on there. Anybody needs to get your merch, they go on your website. Mike's, you know, hey, we're pumping up the volume on that. Mike, you got anything before we get another song in, my man? Not much, man. It's just yeah, it's interesting. The, the town story got me. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> My man was uh he was a news teller. It was, it was pretty cool. Do you do you jump studios like when you travel and stuff like that? Do you go to different studios around you know the, the tour areas, or do you just have one certain studio you stay in to record? You mean? Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah, for the most part, I, I record, you know, in, in just outside of Nashville, there's a, a studio called the Gorilla's Nest, and that's where I have done the, the past three albums. And, and and you know, I'm just, I'm familiar with the, you know, Chris Latham that runs it and all the musicians in town know where it is. So it's just kind of a convenient thing. And Nashville being the recording hub that it is, you know, it's it just kind of caters to that. So, um and and recording has never been my favorite part of the process. It's kind of the necessary evil. Um, a lot of guys love it. You know, it's never been my favorite part. I, I love the live stuff. I love the the creative process of writing and and the opp opportunity to perform them live. But uh, studio is more like real work to me, anyway. <laughs> hey, well, have you have you played Taco Bell yet? Look, man, somebody told me that Nashville Taco Bell had a had where you could go in and they sing art country artists sing. I didn't believe it till I saw it online, and I heard it's a pretty big venue. I was like, the Taco Bell? It's that's hard to believe. There's actually there's also a bank downtown that has a songwriter just that you know come in there and sit and sing. You can listen to writers do a writers round while you're standing in line at the bank. You know it's. Because Nashville, I mean, Nashville's kind of known as a country music town, but more than anything else, it's a song town. I mean, writers from all different styles of music come to Nashville to write. And, you know, there's there's things in Nashville. There are, you know, writers' rooms that you can actually book, like you would book a hotel room where, you know, you get there and there's nothing in there, but, you know, maybe a piano and a table with some pads and paper. And that's where songwriters will get together and, and co-write. It's, it's, a, it's a neat thing. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a, that is a massive different culture. 
And and it's funny is that the amount of artists right now coming out of Nashville and the amount of people going to Nashville, it, you know, it's growing. It's just like a, it's like that new mecca. You know, you know, you don't hear Los Angeles no more. So many people are going to Nashville, and it's funny. Rap artists are working with country singers. It's just the vibe of the music has just changed over the years from back in the day when you know you just had the normal Garth Brooks and you know just the the, the normal entres Johnny Cash guys back in the day. You know. I think the you know just internet and social media has probably helped that. I think there's a lot of a lot of young people that grow up and they're exposed to a different artists and different styles of music. It, it's a, it's a lot easier, you know. In the days when you grew up with a radio station that was playing the same style of music all the time, you know, you were a little more limited. But you know, like I said, there's a lot of these young artists that yeah, they grew up on you know tr traditional country, but they also grew up on on, on hip hop and most top 40 and, and this sort of thing. And all of those styles are finding their, you know, they're kind of merging together at times in, in different ways. And some of it have really, really cool, unique ways that, that that's coming together. Have you ever uh, uh, kind of worked with a gospel band on any of your music or anything or a gospel choir or anything? Cause you know, it seems like you could actually uh, really bump up some of the songs, even the song you just sang, uh, the Walking Man, it, it's just, it's just, you know, a beautiful song. And I just wonder, have you did any collaborations outside of like your normal scope? Not, not with, not with a choir. Although I would, I would, I would love to. You know, I have, I have done some, you know, some like recording with. Uh, there was a, a young artist, a lady out of uh, Australia, and and I brought a, a Southern gospel guy in to sing on on, on a duet with me on the new album and. You know, so there's been a, there's been some there's uh, I've not ventured much outside of, you know, just the, the, the little safe areas that I was comfortable with. But um, but I, I, I heard, wouldn't be opposed I to it. You know, I mean, because well, here's the thing. I grew up, you know, listening to country music, too. But I, but I'm close enough to Memphis that I I discovered, you know, some of those great stations out of Memphis. And so, you know, I would listen to the Red Hot and Blue show. And but they were also playing, you know, music, gospel music out of Memphis, folks like the Staple Singers and Sister Rosetta Tharp and right. uh, the Blind Boys from Alabama and some of the greatest black gospel music ever recorded being played out of Memphis. And so so I heard these things as a kid. And sometimes it was songs I'd never heard. Sometimes it was really familiar songs, but the arrangement was something like I had never heard. And, you know, so it all of that found its way into into my you know into my root you know it's been different in well different you, you got that phases. michael mcdonald look yeah, <laughs> you got that michael mcdonald look going on there you know i started going gray when i was 17. so oh, I've, oh, I've been oh, white-headed oh. my whole life I, mcdonald probably has too so. uh, absolutely so what song do you got for us next daryl man hit us up uh all right well this is um this is a song that I wrote. To, I, I have coffee lots of mornings with some of the retired guys around here in town. And uh, this is kind of inspired by some of those conversations. It's called Back When We Were Boys. When we were boys, the world was our backyard. It was comic books, pen knives, and baseball cards. Hide and seek and tug of war. Race you to the candy store. We didn't know what girls were for back when we were boys. When we were boys, we'd sleep beneath the stars. Trade bottles in for nickel candy bars. Floating on in or two, skipping rocks and bending ropes. All oh, the things we got into back when we were boys. We didn't realize. We had it made with a cane pole and the best friend in the shade. Supper on the stove, 
no bills to pay. Wish I could go back just one more day. When we were boys, we'd slam that old screen door. Each day on new adventures to explore. Stay out till the sun was gone, so street lights started coming on. Mom would holler, y'all come home, back when we were born. We didn't realize we had it made. With a cane pole and the best friend in the shade. Supper on the stove, no bills to pay. Wish I could go back just one more day. When we were boys, we dreamed of being grown. And we would have chased that thought if we had known. Mom and Dad still young and strong Everyone was safe at home And just a blame, it all was gone Back when we were born All right <laughs> Awesome. You know, you remind me so much. I'm just like, when you were singing, I'm just thinking of Jim Croce. I'm just thinking of all that beautiful back, backwoods music back in the late seventies, early eighties, where everybody, you know, is kind of like just trying to find themselves after Vietnam and, you know, and trying to rebuild America. It was just, you just got that flavor, man. I hate to say it. You just got that flavor, Daryl. <laughs> No, that's a that's a huge compliment. You know, I mean, that's some of the music that I, I discovered as a, as a, as a young man. You know, because you're right. After Vietnam and after the, you know, the the music changed a lot, and then everybody was in a bit more of a introspective mood, and and it set the stage for Jim Croce and and Carol King and James Taylor and Don McLean, and you know, these kind of singer songwriter poet kind of people, and. And yes, a lot of that music, you know, it means a lot to me. I, I grew up on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, we're about to get out of here and wanted to say I appreciate you coming on. But before we get out of here, what advice do you have to anyone that wants to pursue music? And and the next one is uh, where are you going to be at after that? So we could, first question first is what advice do you have to anybody that wants to pursue music? Um, be Be honest. Uh, with everything, be honest with with your music. You know, I mean, say the things that, that you want to say. You know, uh, but be honest with people. Treat people the way you'd want to be treated. You know, I don't think anybody ever looked back and regretted being honest and being kind to somebody. So, um, as far as where I'm going to be, um, uh, like I said, I'm always on the road. This weekend, I'm in East Tennessee. Next weekend, in Branson, Missouri. So, uh, yeah, but my oh, tour is on the website. So. Yeah. Yeah, you going over to Arkansas. Yeah, bro. My wife's from North Little Rock. So oh, I know where Branson is. Oh, yes, sir. Got to, give, got, to, got to hit Branson at least once a summer. So <laughs> absolutely. Hey, Mike, you got anything before we get out of here, man? Uh, it's been great meeting you, Daryl, man. Good stuff. Keep the keep those music rolling, man. And shit, you're doing your thing, man. Good luck. Oh, my God, I appreciate it. It's, I always I always enjoy this. To get a chance to talk music and baseball, that's that's hard to that's hard for me to beat. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so everybody, before we get out here, I make sure if you're down in the Tampa area, you go to Metro Diner, and definitely at the end of the show, we have planetary design for out those people that go out the woods and like to drink coffee and do things outdoors. Hey, click on the planetary design side. They're one of our good affiliates and sponsors that help the show keep going. And Daryl, as we always say. Thank you for coming on. Stay blessed, man, and be safe on the road. And we'll always say, Mike, how we say, keep it rolling. Stand up for the weak. And the bigger man's the one who turns the other cheek. If you can say I'm sorry and learn how to forgive, well, then you've had a